Welcome to the Dental Billing Academy podcast, powered by ESS Dental Solutions. Hey, dental billers. We have another awesome episode of the Dental Billing Academy here um, with two guests, not just one. Uh, so I'm up in my game here, but seriously, I have these two guests because you really can't just interview one. Um, it wouldn't really be fair to the other one because they are kind of uh, like Twix that you get together in a package, right? Um, they work so well together and um, you you usually see them tagging each other on social media a lot and just having so much fun um, that they they I just had to bring them in together so that we could talk to both of them. Uh, they're amazingly strong dental billers and fantastic team members. Um, so I have Mia Davis and Jane Weiss here with me today. Hi, ladies. Hi. Thank you for joining me. And um, we want to jump in, as we always do, and find out more about you. So we'll start out with you, Mia. Uh, just tell us about your background uh, in the dental field, how you got into it. Um, tell us your whole story. Okay. Um, I think my story is kind of like a lot of people I've talked to in dental. Accidentally, I got, <laughs> I got into this field. Um, I was in college studying to be actually a doctor not dentist, a doctor. And um, I was looking for a part-time job and um, my roommate said, my dentist is looking for someone to help. And I started working front desk and kind of fell in love with, with dentistry altogether. And so I've been doing this for over 30 years and um, I've done almost everything you can do from um, front desk, office manager, I've been a dental assistant, I've been an insurance biller, um, I've done everything I tell people except for the high, be a hygienist and a dentist. So anything, any other position that you can do in the dental office, I have, have done and probably been some. So, but that's how I got in it and, you know, just kind of fell in love with it. Awesome. Yeah, that is a, a story that we hear a lot, at least the first part um, about accidentally getting into the into dentistry. We kind of slip and fall into it, some of us, and then it just grabs us and doesn't let us go. So what about you, Jane? Well, my journey was a little bit different. I have these big honking teeth. So um, I always wanted to be like a dental assistant or in the dental field. So I started out as a dental assistant. And then back in the day when everything was on ledgers, not computers, billing and stuff like that. But I started as a dental assistant. And then the front office lady had to have a hysterectomy. And in those days, you were off for six weeks. So the doctor didn't want to bring in someone he didn't know to run the front. So I ran the front and he hired a dental assistant to work in the back. And um, I never went back. I loved it. I could talk. Um, people could talk to me and it mattered what I said. And then I just really loved the insurance part of it. it to me, it was always a game. It was a puzzle. Um, but like Mia, I did everything except for be the doctor and the hygienist, um, empty trash, suck spit, assisted, whatever I needed to do. But my real passion was the, the billing part of it. Um, not so much the patients, um, more so, you know, hashing it out with the, uh, the insurance agents to get, get our stuff paid in a timely manner. So that's how I got into it over 30 years too. I love that. So your your smile got you into dentistry and then your brain got you into dental billing. Yes. <laughs> I love it. Oh, well, so obviously the two of you combined have many years of uh, dental experience and dental billing experience. So um, absolutely, you're very, very strong experienced dental billers individually. Um, but I would love to hear about what it is that makes you all such a dynamic team. You want to go first, Mia? Yeah. I can go first. I, um, I, I, <laughs> Jane has actually said this. Um, what did she say? Um, you're the yin to my yang. And, and, and it really kind of is that the things that I love doing, she doesn't like so much. And the things she loves doing, I don't like so much. Um, and, and we, we have, we communicate so well, we, we have open communication, we are honest with each other. And I think that is very important. 
Um, we support each other. But, um, and that's in be, be it constructive or, or otherwise. So if something's, we're, we're not afraid to come to the other one and say, I found this because we're human, you know, that things happen, you miss stuff. Um, but we're open. We have open communication. Oh, hey, I saw this and maybe you need to take a look, another look at it or whatever. But I think the biggest thing for us is the fact that we are pretty much like opposites attract and the fact that we have open communication between the two of us. I think that's a huge part of our relationship is um, I want to say, too, that that Mia brings so much wisdom and uh, knowledge to everything that she does and everything she touches. So I'm just attracted to her with that that magnet because of her morals and her ethics. And we're both on that same page and we both want the same thing. And then. You know, we can have those critical conversations without, you know, us calling each other names or it, there's it, it's so past high school. It's it, we just have this mutual communication that we can talk to each other and it doesn't matter what time of day or night we text and call. And, you know, um, the last person I called on my phone was me and the last person she called was me. So, I mean, we just have a really good communication and um I think sometimes outside of our yin and yang, we we struggle with how come people don't communicate? I mean, it just makes it all better when you communicate with someone. Um, and uh, the person that brought us together, she's like, you know, just give her a try. And, you know, um, and I was like, OK, let's let's do it. And I can't imagine my life without her. Yeah, you know, I just I just can't the way we work together. And it's. It, it's funny because I'll call her and she's like, I was just going to call you about that. And I mean, we're on, I mean, we're like just pinpointed to the same, you know, process or, you know, whatever we're working on a claim or a payment or, you know, whatever. We're just like in tune to that. And I don't know how we developed it, but God gave, gave us each other in my opinion. So yeah, communication is key. Yeah, and I think it's a mutual respect also. Um, you know, you, you have to respect the people that you work with in order for your relationship. To, and it's a relationship. In order for your relationship to prosper, you know, there has to be a mutual respect. Absolutely. So you all are just as similar as you are different. And so um, what was it early on um, you know, I absolutely agree that communication is so important and it's something that really is necessary um, in, uh, for dental billers and the front desk staff, especially if there's more than one person um, to communicate. But how was it that you all recognized um, the, the strengths in each other and that you were in fact that yin and yang and, and could get all of the dental billing processes completed um, between what you liked, Mia, and what you like to do, Jane? That's a good question. And, and it's almost like Jane said, it, we did, it just clicked. We came in with, with open and honest conversation to begin with. Um, I think we, from our very first conversation, like Jane said, we were put together. And um, our first conversation was, was clear. This is what you know, my role is, this is what your role is. Um, there was open, honest communication about our expectations of ourselves, number one, and then of each other. Um, and because we both respected that, I think is what drew us, you know, even closer. And we continue now we're, we're approaching three years and it's, it's, it's wonderful. Like she said, I, I don't particularly want to partner with anyone else. So, <laughs> I mean, if it's, if it's not broke, don't fix it, that kind of thing, you know, so. Absolutely. If uh, you have a dental billing partner for life and, and since it is, it's something that I think that a lot of uh, dental billing teams strive for and not as many can achieve. So when you do um, achieve a, a great working relationship like you all have, definitely hold on to it. Absolutely. I do want to add to Mia though, too, um, because I'm very, I'm pretty blunt and upfront and she can take that and make it professional <laughs> to whereas, Oh, you shouldn't say it that way, Jane, you should. And, and I really take that 
because I know how I am. So I respect that in her that she can, you know, take those words and make it, you know, seem like it's a flowery compliment when basically <laughs> it's a criticism. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> she can do that for me all the time. <laughs> That's a great filter to have is somebody that you can filter those types of communications through to make sure that you don't um, cause any, any issues that you didn't mean to just from being, right. being right. too, up, uh, you know, too direct. So I agree. I've had, I've had to filter some messages myself through people. Uh, and I truly appreciate that I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> so I, um, would like to know from you, Jane, as a dental biller um, who primarily prefers to work the insurance aging uh, claims, like you said, uh, it's a game, it's a puzzle. What is the biggest roadblock that you've encountered um, in, in working aging claims? Um, I would say, like, I think of everything like a wheel and like if every part of that wheel is correct then the claim gets paid right away but then when you factor in that the insurance wasn't verified correctly or the payer id wasn't entered correctly or they misspelled a name or transposed numbers or something like that so if if a person is not detail oriented in that then it ends up in my over 60 or my over 90 because i'm still struggling to fix that part so i would say the biggest part is getting a person that is as detailed in front of me and in front of Mia, because basically we're behind you in that wheel that's constantly turning. And if we can't get all that information in there correctly, demographics, you know, one number off on a group number or the insurance has it as John and the, you know, the office is billing as Johnny, you know, just something, you know, just, you know, my, you know, it's so simple that can cause, cause that. So then you have to like be so detailed in going in and saying, okay, why was this claim rejected? Oh, I see the number wasn't put in there correctly and just correcting all that. And so um, I tried to gently remind people, hey, put this stuff in here correctly. And then Mia's like, okay, let's word it this way. <laughs> you know, <laughs> But I, I think that's the biggest thing is you're, we're having to rely on somebody else. Whereas when we were in, a, in an office, she was very detailed and I was detailed about getting all that information correct. So we didn't have, you know, our broken spokes in our wheel. You know, it, it just constantly was a continuous thing. You know, patient comes in, get information, send claim, get paid, done. Instead of this, patient comes in. It, information's not entered correctly and then your your spokes are getting broken so it's not getting paid so figuring that out basically so a puzzle you're putting all those pieces together and you need those pieces to get that claim paid right and um pre-appointment readiness um and verifying the insurance it, like you said it, it really starts the wheel off in the right direction and making sure um all the dental processes <laughs> after can be um completed it, timely and efficiently. So if that's not done, then it does cause, I'm trying to keep going with your wheel analogy, uh, you know, it, a flat tire or uh, a spoke to fall out or, or something uh, right. of that nature, it, you know, you, you kind of come to a halt. So, you know, uh, dental billers um, out there everywhere, if you are not a detail oriented um, individual or, or have, um, people on your team that are not, you know, it's, it's okay. That's be you right. And, and know where your strengths are. And if your strength is not putting in the details, um, then you need people like Mia and Jane to help you on the back end to make sure that these claims do get followed up on and paid. Um, so the, they're like you all were talking about your strengths uh, that you each have. You know, some some dental billers don't uh, have that strength, and and that's okay. That's why we're here. Absolutely, absolutely. I like to add to what Jane says, and it's funny because 
as much as we talk, we've never talked about our love for puzzles. And I'm a puzzler too. And that think that's one of the things that drives me putting the pieces together in any type of thing. But another very vital piece to that puzzle is making sure clinical documentation is in place as well. Um, that is uh, tends to be a struggle. If, if you don't have the right clinical stuff, if you have everything you need clinically, we can figure out all that other stuff and get you your money. But you know, that is a very vital piece of the puzzle or spoken James wheel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, let's take a quick uh, sponsor break. We'll come right back and finish this conversation. Awesome. This podcast is sponsored by eAssist Dental Solutions. eAssist helps dentists collect 100% of what dentists are owed by insurance companies. Their dental billing experts work with dentists and their teams to ensure the claim submission process is smooth and that dentists and their staff can focus on patient care. If you or someone you know is in need of assistance with the dental billing process, call 1-844-EASSIST or visit dentalbilling.com to find out more. All right, we are back with Mia and Jane. And uh, Mia, this next question, I wanna start with you. So we are speaking to all dental billers everywhere. This is a fantastic resource um, along with our uh, social media networking pages on Facebook and Instagram for all dental billers. So speaking to all of the dental billers, give them one piece, your most important piece of guidance. Um, wow, that's a good question. I guess the most important thing for me as a dental biller is, is your attention to detail. Like Jane said, you, you have to be able to, um, to pay attention to, to what's in front of you. Um, knowing that a claim or the code is not the right code for a particular service. I know a lot of it comes from experience. Um, you know, like Jane and I both have over 30 years of experience. <clears throat> and some of this stuff comes only with experience. But I think having a keen eye to catch things that look out of place, um, being able to look at EOBs, it's like, oh, yes, this is right or this is wrong. Um, attention to detail. I think that that is the most important thing for me um, in what I do is paying attention to the, to the details. Well, what would your piece of advice be, Jane? Do you agree with that? Do you have something to add to that? I definitely agree with that. But I also agree that um, I believe each member of, of any dental office, they have uh, each person brings strengths in. And if you can play off of that strength, like if you notice their attention to detail, put them on IV. Put them on dental billing. If their strength is, uh, you know, welcoming patients, put them at that front desk and get get all that information that they need. Get the demographics correct. Attention to detail again, but definitely play off of that um, that staff member's strengths instead of their weaknesses, and um, build on that because that'll be very profitable to you. So absolutely. And then and, and, and to add one other thing is to um, be open to constructive criticism. I mean, I think I said earlier, none of us are perfect. You're, we're all human. It's human to err at some point. We're all going to make mistakes and just be or and we don't all know everything. So just be open to accept advice or criticism, so to speak, from someone who may have found something that you didn't do correctly or could do better. And that's really hard, um, especially when you have amassed many years of experience, like both of you ladies have, um, you start to maybe feel like you've seen everything, you've come across everything, um, even though you haven't. Um, Insurancers are trying to pull new things on us every day. Mm -hmm. So they're creatively thinking of ways. Um, so we see new things that we never, you know, when we thought we saw it all, saw it all and we, we see things every day. Um, but you do kind of feel like you have gotten um, so many years um, under your belt that, you know, you, you know, all the things there is to know, opening yourself up for um, any constructive criticism from someone uh, that may 
may know how to do something more efficiently exactly. or it, like you all talked about earlier, uh, may be able to say something nicer, um, use different wording or um, just lots of different things. They're opening yourself up to, uh, to learn even when you have years and years and years of experience is really uh, something that's hard to do, but very important. Necessary. Absolutely. I mean, dental de dentistry is, in my opinion, constantly evolving. You know, things change, technology changes, codes change. <laughs> Every year, you know, every year that is something we can we can guarantee. Right. January 1st. So, right. So you you'll never know everything there is to know about dentistry. And I think that's one of the things that make Jane and I work so well together is, is that we are both open to constructive criticism or advice. And we don't mind asking when we don't know something. And I think that's key. If you know that you don't know, just ask. You know, there's so many people. I mean, I, like you said about the about, the Facebook groups and all of that. Love those groups because you can always chat something in. If you have an experience that somebody probably has and you can get help, there's so many resources that you can use to get information, you know, utilize it. Absolutely. Um, and, and that's the difference. Uh, I've talked about it before on other episodes and you all um, absolutely were, would know this uh, as well that, you know, back when we first started our journey as dental billers, there were not the resources that there are today. Um, you really had to, in most cases, just learn as you go and learn from mistakes. Um, maybe get trained by somebody that did have more experience than you. Um, but now there are so many resources available like this podcast and um, the social media networks, um, blogs and uh, articles and uh, videos and all kinds of things for dental billers to go on and find the answer to their, right. their question. So there really is no excuse anymore for, I didn't know how to do that. Um, right. It's all out there. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. There's so many resources now um, compared to what they were. I mean, when I first started doing dental building, it was the beginning of implants. So <laughs> uh, I'm trying to think what you sure implants have started even? Maybe. No, Maybe. no. <laughs> not when I started. Implants were they were not doing implants. I, I was still I was still doing appointments on an actual book. Book, uh, yeah. Handwriting or typing out claim forms to mail, you know. <laughs> so yes, there's so many more resources available. Yeah, take advantage of that and absolutely definitely be open and trust me, you don't know it all. I learn stuff every day and it doesn't matter, you know, and I just don't learn from people that are older than me. I learn from the people that I work with. I, I'm amazed at their, how smart they are and, you know, realize that, that there's other people out there that you can just glean all that information from and just be an open, you know, be open to that. Not that I know everything because Honey, you don't. You don't know everything. <laughs> I can't imagine that any anyone could ever know everything about dental. You think mm -hmm. the code start at zero one? Well, I guess it's two zero now, and go to the nine thousands. There's so so many codes with so many things. There's no way any one person could have experienced everything there is to know with dental. So, like Jane said, be open and, and use your resources. I'm with you, Jane. I, I learn stuff all the time. There's so many codes. Shoot, I didn't even know this code existed. I mean, you look at those codes all the time, but you know, there's so many different. Yeah, different just just scenarios. before this, just before this podcast, Mia had text messaged me about something I didn't know about an X-ray thing. I I didn't know, but now I know. So, yeah, you learn something new every day. So be open to it. Well, that is great, great advice. Thank you both. Um, and. You know, you all, like I said before, are amazing dental billers individually, but uh, absolutely one of the most dynamic teams that I know. And so thank you so much for joining me and um, talking about hopefully you've inspired a lot of other dental billers out there to work towards having that same synergy uh, on their team as you all have. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.
Thanks for listening to another episode of the Dental Billing Academy podcast. Uh, like we mentioned in this episode, uh, join the social networking uh, platforms of in Facebook or Instagram. Search us on those platforms uh, to expand your network and um, really collaborate with other dental billers across the country. Uh, we have a lot of fun on either of them, both of them, um, posting uh, episodes of these podcasts. It's a great place to ask questions. Just another resource available uh, at your disposal as a dental biller. And that's what uh, we all know as dental billers that we can never have enough of. So again, search us on Facebook, uh, Dental Billing Academy. Uh, on Instagram, you can search Dental Billing Academy or it's dental.billing. Thanks and make sure you subscribe to this podcast so you don't ever miss an episode.